welcome, welcome, welcome to FC Custom Designs. Um, this morning we are 20 minutes of 12. We're going to go ahead and put a coat of, of tongue oil, golden oak, on this bandsaw box. Um, and uh, this is a 19 inch uh, bandsaw box. This is one of seven bandsaw boxes custom made for uh, the client who happens to be my wife. <laughs> um, I made her a sewing table and so as time goes on, you know that honey-do list, um, you, she said, I would love it if you could make me these, whatever it is, it's going to help me hold things. So well, that's what this is. So what I want to do though, before I take this guy out, I've stained um, these guys here already. These are some examples. Um, of some of the boxes okay so um i wanted to talk about the whoopsies i did have a a, a, a friend at work that said why you don't why don't you have whoopsies videos because they can be fun so i started to do them uh look up where i deliver some bandsaw boxes to a customer um and hopefully you'll <coughs> you'll laugh a little bit <coughs> so at any rate what is a bandsaw box? A bandsaw box can be made up of joint wood. You can see over here, uh, this is pine that I joined up. And this pine is just lying around your wood shop. Okay, it's going to be everywhere. The, the pieces of wood that you can join up. I've got some over here that are ready for some creation, some creativity. So at any rate, um, to my dismay, the bandsaw box, once I took it up to the to the... To the table was sticking out that much whoops so i had to take the finished product and basically what i did is i went over to the table saw and i sliced it and diced it uh like deli meat until i got it down so long story short if you look inside uh, you're going to see hopefully uh, you're going to see how many times i had to do this so you have one two three pieces um, and, I, and I had to keep doing that. I had to do the same thing to, to this. You can see that this is one, two, and eventually, um, after uh, three attempts, I think, I finally got it to where um, it's the size that will go under the, uh, the sewing table. And so there you go. So, you know, have patience. Uh, this 4x4 this four four, um, is very tricky in the winter time it just wants to crack 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 and that was one of the problems that i had as well and i'm going to show you that whoopsies okay um you can see here this all just happened naturally i didn't cause that it just cracked apart there and how did we fix it so it happened here as well well it's very very simple you're just going to take your glue um naturally you're going to spread apart the the crack and then uh, put the glue in there and clamp it. There are times though though that I just took the glue and I just put it like a skin on it just rubbed it on here and, and then on the inside and that became like a very tight skin um, that that held it together so there's there's various ways. Now um, you may be wondering uh, you said this is the finished product um, why is this not cleaned up? Because this is going to get attached underneath the, uh, the, the table, okay? So you're never going to see that. Uh, I did have to smooth this out, not for pretty, but just smooth it out because uh, the knees are going to come in contact, possibly in the legs, with the bottom, okay? So we'll show you what all this looks like once we have it uh, attached. I still have a journey. I've only got one, two three that'll be ready to uh, uh, install I have got to here's another whoopsies if we look at this I think I was in a real hurry um, I when I went to cut the bottom part the, uh, the um, out uh, this is the drawer right um, it was too thin so I had to take the the main block and, and cut a veneer if you wish and, and then I attached it to this. So now this is ready to go. So I'll tell you what, I've learned quite a bit 
uh, with the bandsaw box. Now I never, I guess I never got so aggressive uh, with making longer and bigger boxes. I've always made these little small guys like this. And really I never have, didn't have any sorts of issues um, with, with the cracking on, on, the, on the, the ends um, whatsoever. Maybe a little bit here and there, but um, it could be the dead of winter has just sucked the soul of the moisture right out of our, our area. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and go out to the poly shed. I'm very, very excited about that because um, it's 40 degrees uh, in the local area. And uh, rather than keep tucking in the wood shop, um, what I'm going to do is put this here and I try not to fall just so you're not too distracted with uh, all the movings around uh, that uh, transpire as we come out of uh, SD Custom Designs wood shop. So uh, this is your weekly video. Um, we're going to come out with minimal of one video a week. Um, and uh, I had a little bit of an accident. You may have seen the cast. It's hard to hide the cast. Um, and uh, But that doesn't stop us woodworkers, does it? I actually type for a living. That is proving to be very difficult uh, to do. Uh, so at any rate, here we are in the wood shop, my friends. The wood shop. We are in the uh, poly shed. When I came out here, like moments ago, we were at 68 degrees with no heater. I turned the heater on to bring the temperature up a little bit more. If you don't have a poly shed, poly, I call it the poly stain shed, you, you know, what are you waiting for? I, it's in the back part of my yard, okay? And um, it's just a no-brainer. My pastor made this this uh, this part of the the uh, the shed for us, and put this door in. We only had pallets because I would pick them up the side of the road and stack them in the backyard, and I made like this big square out of pallets. And then he said, "Here, happy birthday! Uh, what a great pastor!" And some parishioners came over and helped us out. Uh, actually, I didn't have to do anything, which is really hard for me <laughs> not to do anything, especially when it's for me. Uh, so there you go. So yeah, the poly shed. Uh, please ask me about this poly shed. How do you make one? It's pretty self-explanatory. If you're watching this video, you may already know how to do your uh, basic construction. Oh, I just noticed a gap there. Oh, that's not. Yeah. Okay. So, but at any rate, I mean, I did this just over time, and uh, boy, and then along the journey, parishioner gave me this happens to line up with this that I made ad hoc. There was no rhyme or reason to the height of this. So I thought I liked how that worked out. And then we got one over here. I really just need room to get in here with my body and uh, have all this surface is just cool. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get to this. I guess, again, the challenge for me uh, is is not to, to strain the, the left part of the... Uh... And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dump this in and just let it drink. Think about how long this wood has been not taking the moisture from the earth. Okay? So we're just going to allow it to, to drink up the the stain. This is a, 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 a tongue oil uh, that is golden oak. Okay. So, yeah, who am I to deny this guy after all this, this time of uh... now you can you can apply it with lamb's wool. You can do that, and that's usually what I what I uh, apply. At times it all depends on what the application is. Now my biggest challenge is going to be not to get. I can already hear my wife now. What? What were you thinking when you did that? So I have to really try to be careful and not get uh, stain. I know I'm going to fail uh, on the on the, the cast. 
as it is all the VOCs are getting into the the fibers and I'm gonna have to sit near a candle or something and burn out those VOCs so at any rate this this is uh, this is the deal here I'm only gonna put one coat that's really all I need a copious coat this is a very generous coat um, on on the wood and the wood is saying it's about time Steve um, I've been thirsting for a while so yeah the, the journey with with this box has been fascinating again with the whoopsies it was too uh, it was sticking out I made it too big so you know I say to myself when those types of things happen it's a good thing I know somebody that knows how to work with wood uh, that would be me so a lot of this is are just you know it's the time of the year and the wood is the wood is just drying out you know that that's why when you're you're making uh furniture you have to consider that the wood is going to expand and contract and, and you have to let it do that okay you can't confine it uh by by gluing and screwing uh, things uh semi-permanently in place you're going to have to um uh, screw in and, and, and uh, allow for uh, just just hollow out some of the the wood so so that the screw goes down and then you hollow out in the wood so the wood can go back and forth and then don't screw it down so hard right give it give it a chance so here we go I apologize for the removing of the camera like I do um, so on and so forth and you know what the nice thing about applying this, by the way, for this Danish oil, is, is it's not going to get nuts on you, okay? Um, if, if you're applying stain, right, let's just say you're applying Minwax, minwax stain, um, you have to move right along and, and keep a wet edge, as they say. I used to paint for a living uh, years ago. I did all aspects of spraying paint, polyurethane, uh, stain, you name it. We did houses, new construction. At one point, uh, I had a team uh, that I was working for uh, Northeast Painting Company, a uh, really, really small uh, company in, up here in New York, upstate New York, and uh, and we were doing three houses a day, new, new, new construction, three a day, my friend. We moved right along. So we had maskers and preppers you know that type of thing and then I would then I would do uh, a set of doors like 32 doors I just set a booth up up in one of the rooms in the house and um, I would make a little poly booth a booth a temporary booth and and I would uh, oops I'm, I'm gonna hear it from the lovely one I'm getting stained everywhere on this thing oh, oops but I tell you what you will identify with me, you woodworkers. You're going to identify. It's hard to just stop. We just don't know how to stop. This is my. This is not my full-time job. This is what I do on the side um, for fun. We're SD Custom Designs. Let's see here. There's our card, and um, we are on YouTube. Of course, you're watching this on YouTube. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to our channel. We're up to a hundred and seventy and moving along here. Um, I've had my channel out for about uh, two and a half to three years, um, and uh, we get lots of hits. Please uh, comment, hey, I don't like your videos. This is what you can do to improve them, um, or that was a great tip. And here's my tip. I want to. I like to see uh, tours of your wood shops. That is exciting to me. Um, I'm going to do another one. Um, uh, I have done some videos on tours of my shop you know they change through time they, they're constantly changing because we change and our needs change so so there you go um, well, I'm gonna do another one uh, I'd like to see yours and you know I have 300 videos officially 300 it's gonna be 301 now uh, videos and you name it I, I'm telling you I have probably covered dozens of subjects what I'll do is I'll talk through the main you know the main subject like today is staining or whatever who knows what I'm gonna call this um, but I'll talk about the journey to get to where I'm going and I'll buy new tools we're, we're gonna be getting a planer I think I landed on the Dewalt 13 inch or 13 and a half inch whatever it is um, I really 
after doing lots of research it's, it's a lot of money it's six hundred dollars um and we'll get the the planer with the the, the plates that open up the, um and so at any rate that'll be a lot of fun and then we're going to get a pen gun that is operated by battery imagine that it's you know back in the 90s when i well actually it was in the late 70s i started out uh doing this in in israel uh as a, as a teenager i moved to israel uh, as a missionary and um have lots of friends um arab friends and and um and, and uh, Israeli friends, it's just, you know, I mean, it's quite the journey for me. So, at any rate, I'm just trying to fill time so it's not boring. <laughs> All right, so again, really what we're going to see on this unit is is just the face, okay? So we want to make sure that everything is going to be cool here. So I'll let this guy dry here. I'm really not sure how I'm going to be... Uh, what I'm going to be putting on top of the tongue oil, to be honest. Um, so, uh, here we go. All right, this guy's done. I'll tell you what, I couldn't do this fast enough because, uh, like I said, it's just been drying and cranking on me. So, it's good to share these, I, these, these experiences along the journey as well. Share your journeys, um, the whoopsies. I'm going to be sharing some journeys, some, some really bad whoopsies. Uh, where I've had uh, accidents, accidents, you know, because I wasn't paying attention. You, you always have to pay attention. You can't let your mind be distracted when you are working on a project. Um, it's funny enough, I was watching somebody, uh, they said, you know, I've never talked about accidents. And they talked about one. And, um, and, and wouldn't you know, three weeks later I had one. <laughs> um, I touched a, a jointer. And, uh. And so I, I'll, we'll talk about that. And then in the early 90s, I was just exhausted and tired. I helped somebody move. Uh, me and my wife were always doing stuff like that. And we did this, we did that, so many things. And I did a very careless thing because I wasn't thinking. It wasn't in this wood shop that I have now. Um, it was when I first started out in the States. Um, so we'll talk about that too. About that accident. That wasn't a radio arm saw. You think I'd give up? Well, I'm never going to give up. <laughs> That's not what I do. We love woodworking, and so I'm sure you guys that are watching this, you like it too. So again, uh, subscribe to my channel, please. Hit the bell if you'd like to be reminded. Uh, not reminded. I don't know why I say that. If you'd like to get notified that um, a video just went up uh, onto YouTube, okay? So i got to wipe this off. I know my wife's going to be very not happy with me. I was supposed to put a bag over this, and uh, I didn't do that. <laughs> Whoops. All right, let's let you guys go. Probably don't want to watch me clean my hands here. God bless. Thanks for, for subscribing to our channel. Um, again, a video a week is what we're doing, or more. Uh, depends on how busy we are. And you never know what we're going to be talking about. Lately, for the last several months, it's been band, but the journey of the bandsaw box, okay? The whole journey of making these different sizes and styles. And we're only going to do more. So thanks, God bless, and thanks for coming into the shop of SC Custom Designs.